Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I just thought I'd do, I promised to do, try to do two videos a week, poker videos that is. I did a video yesterday about my carnival diet journey if you're interested in taking a look at that. Um, I've just started it recently and I'm trying to lose weight and improve my health. But let's get back to the poker. Um, I've had... It's interesting, I think, with the carnivore diet, it's made me feel more alert, more focused, more energetic. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's all positive. And when I've played poker, uh, I seem to have been playing better. I don't know if there's any connection. I'm not saying that there is. It just feels maybe it's just coincidence but i've had a good run this week as you can see from the thumbnail um i've just been playing five dollar nine max on poker stars and i've played about i think to, we say here about four four thousand hands so uh, that's been over a few sessions i mean generally speaking that will probably be about one full day grinding but well, I don't do full days grindings anymore so um I, this is over about four or five sessions I think maybe not that many but over the last two or three days during this week so you know the we plus eighty dollars or so in profit eighty eighty five dollars um eighty six dollars yeah, nearly ninety dollars apparently, and forty three plus forty three big blinds. So that's totally crazy. It's not always like that. We know that. Um, I was intending to do this video anyway, and it's just a coincidental. I've had an upswing. I would have done a video if I've had a, I had a downswing. You've seen plenty of my miserable plays anyway. So it's nice to have a video where. I'm showing you some uh, uh, upswing. I'm sure the next one will be the opposite. Um, so, yeah, and, and the bonuses this week. I think I've I've cashed one chest, five dollars, about three dollars a leaderboard point, uh, leaderboards points, uh, money. And I've got about 70 points left to do in a $15 weekly poker challenge, which I've got about three days left to do that, two and a half, three days left to do that. That shouldn't be a problem. I haven't played any tournaments this week. If at the end of the day I, um, I'm struggling to get the $15 points, I'll probably just play a couple of tournaments. They'll pretty much be free anyway, so and if I lose in those, I lose. Uh, you know, it doesn't really cost me anything. But if I if I, if I uh, hit, then that's great. Um, it's not really going to cost me anything anyway. Cause I'm plus with the bonuses, I'm plus around a hundred dollars or so anyway. So happy days. So let's go through a few hands. What I thought I'd do, I've just selected. 10 or 11 hands here uh, that you're not they're not all the winning hands there's quite a few more if we scroll down but you know there's I, I think you can see here probably a lot of these hands are, are going to be pretty straightforward in the sense that uh i have just got served some great cards and great flops and it wasn't really <laughs> that many decisions to make and I think I was up against some pretty poor players but so okay let's re we'll, we'll go for about 10 um 11 winning hands and then we'll have a look at maybe a similar amount of losing hands so let's uh let, let's uh let's do that so we've got the replayer up there let's just close that a bit okay so king kings um, I've got, actually, let's put the villain names on if we can. Um, I 
Okay, so we got the villain names on there. Sorry about that, but I'm not going to put your... Uh, it does have the V-pips. I don't want to show the V-pips because it doesn't... Uh, I can't see. Show, show who the whole card. Show chips to be blinds. Oh, yeah, we got the show hood. So the show hood should be off. Okay. Okay, great. Yes. Well, it's on. Uh, I don't know. The, the show hood should be off, but it's on. I'm not too worried about that. The, they're just the VPIP numbers. I'm not too worried about that. I, I, th I thought it was off, but uh, it isn't. So let's just go through this. So King King. We get limpers. I mean, this is... We get this a lot at the micro stage. We've got short stacks here. 60% I just find these players annoying I mean $5 games you can't afford a $5 buy in I don't play you know uh, that's my attitude when you get these players who come in short stack they win a few chips and they leave the table they join another table these players should be dealt with by the poker sites I think you know just okay I'm winning $80 $90 I just don't right, really like this attitude and behavior but i can understand short stacks a bit more when you know the money's a bit more you know a 500 hundred dollar game but two dollars five dollars you know it's just anyway so we re-raise could have re-raised bigger here but we didn't uh we get flattened but look you know guy with 24 Three thirty 30 chips, 30, 32 chips, something totally pathetic. Should be really be shoving that by now, but it doesn't. This guy puts in a big bet. Um, don't worry about that VPIP number. I don't think that that's really his VPIP. Um, no, it isn't. The VPIPs are a bit messed up at the moment. Don't, just ignore those. So just imagine that they're not there. I tried to get rid of them, but I can't. So, bit of a blip. So, um, well, I'm not getting out of the way with King Kings, but all these stacks, if everyone goes in here, <coughs> we're just going to have to uh, go for it. I mean, clearly he's saying I have Aces, which when you do have King King, uh, it uh, seems to come quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, there you go. So, we call, um, you know, we have got a big stack. I think if I was just about, if I was 100 big blinds here, I just would have shoved. But, you know, nearly 200 big blinds, so I'm not going to do that. It's too much. So, you know, King King is vulnerable. I do think it's Ace Ace. Um, we really are looking for a King on the flop here. And um, without that King on the flop, I'm going to be very cautious. So this guy obviously sticks it in and beautiful flop uh the guy with the big uh who put the big re-raise in he's not going to have queen 10 he's not going to be doing that with queen 10 i don't think you know i, th I think his actual v pip if i remember rightly was fairly standard so i don't think he was a sort of player who's going to be messing around for betting with queen 10 so i'm discounting that pretty much I, I'm, I'm pretty much thinking i have the best hand here I, I think i'm up against a say so I'm, this is going to end up going in so he sticks a big chunk in there and we just go in now we have no option really the pot's 160 we've got 160 stat to pot ratio one to one he's got 60 left we're going to be playing for stacks, and I think probably here I'm just going to put it in, which I do. Um, you know, there is obviously a little danger that a straight could get there, and we want to make them pay for that. Uh, so there's enough money in the pot. to t If we take it down now anyway, we maybe lose a little bit. But uh, I think he's, 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 he's committed now anyway. So, which he does, and 
it runs out. Uh, we've got a boat, and he does have a say. So it's a bit bad luck for him. I thought, th you know, he played that. Uh, well, I mean, 33 big blinds is a bit much, but I think he was aiming for the little guy's stack, hoping that I would fold. He was unlucky there. So, you know, again, King King with a set. There wasn't really, I think we played that okay. Um, yeah, I don't think, I think probably our open race size could have been a bit bigger. And, uh, but other than that, I think most of the things were fairly okay there. Okay, so let's move on to the next hand. We have Ace Ace, so, you know, we are in great shape. Ignore the VPIP numbers. They're not relevant. Let's just try one more time to take them off. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance, isn't it? So, show hood, where is it? So hood on off. Okay. I think that's off. Yeah. Right, it's come back on. Um maybe we can do here. Hide hood. How about that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. It's not usually like that. Um it's just a bit glitchy today. Hold a manager for each great program, by the way. So is things like Poker Tracker. Um developed by the same company if you do want to purchase this program there's a link in the description and uh, you, i make a little bit of money on that a little bit it helps me but uh go, go, go ahead and take a look so ace ace let's go through again stupid limp under the gun what can i say i mean what kind of goes through people's minds it's like oh let me limp i mean yeah i mean i can understand sometimes doing that with ace ace i sometimes limp ace ace king king in a tournament when i know there's i'm surrounded by maniacs um cash games uh, i'm never really doing that um it doesn't really work for me. I have tried it once or twice. I never really get what I want. What I'm hoping, what usually hoping is, is that somebody re raises three bets, four bet, you know. Uh, there you go. But okay, so what do we do here? We re raise again, could have gone a bit bigger, but at the same time, I want to get other people in the pot. I want to encourage here a three bet. And so, I mean, there's probably a bit of an argument sometimes for going a bit smaller. Sometimes people think, oh, you haven't really got anything. Well, you've got the nuts. Okay. So, I think nine chips is okay. Uh, but I think, you know, sometimes a bit smaller, could, but maybe about five chips could be... Look a bit fishy, play a bit fishy, and uh, someone might have, have a go at you. That's great. Or you could go even higher, isolate this player with 80 chips and see if he shoves on you. Give him no option if he's got something like King King or Queen Queen or Ace King. Um, anyway, so... We get flatted, so this player's capped himself a little bit, so is he going to do that with ace-ace? No, it's not, there's only one other ace-ace left. Uh, King-king, I thought he would have been raised here, so queen-queen, oh, queen, possibly we raised. Uh, I'm, I'm really putting him on sort of ace-king here, so that's great. Uh not ace far, ace king or king queen sort of hand, maybe jack jack. So let's continue. So yeah, we go three way to the flop. So let's see what happens. Uh, the flop's great for us because you know, do they have nine nine? Possibly three three. I don't think it's there. Seven seven. 
possibly nine sevens, nine threes, seven threes. They're all not there. So really, nine nine is a possibility. Seven 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 is less of a possibility. We really are sort of up over pairs, up against over pairs now. I think Jack Jack, ten ten Jack Jack, Queen Queen, probably is the most likely group of hands that are there. I'm a crushing that obviously. So, you know, I think now we're just looking to get this in. At some point, we've got 28 chips there. We've got two stacks there. We want to get all of that if we can. So, we, I think this bet is probably a bit of a mistake. Um, I don't think it encourages other people to continue. I, I think I should have, I could have been checking here. Or I could have been putting at least a small bet in. I think a small bet is probably better on reflection. I think um, there's no reason, I don't think, to go this large. There's not too much threat there. Uh, but I think maybe we could say that, you know, a jack-jack, a queen-queen, a 10-10 jack-jack, queen-queen hand is... Uh, going to be continuing they're going to pay that so you know there's that so i think a bit smaller here would be the preferred option correct me if i'm wrong you, you tell me in the comments so we get a call from this guy so i don't think he's going to be doing that with ace king i think this tells me he's either got nine nine or some kind of over pair um okay so we've got 69 chips left in the pot we get a little bit of a tricky turn um yeah you know, does it does he have 10 jack i mean possibly does he have eight eight nine nine possibly we've got a stack to pot ratio of one to one now so Usually with an over pair, stat to pot rise to one to one. My usual strategy is pretty much whatever's on the board, I'm going all in. And if he does have the straight, he has the straight. If he has the set, he has the set. I don't think, and I don't think he has a set because he would have. I would have probably been re-raised on the flop. So I think this is more like an over pair or a fishy ace king or king queen. We'll see. So. I'll put it in. That's my standard move here. We get called. And 10 7 off. Let's just pause for a minute there. <laughs> you know, all that analysis. <laughs> I mean, clearly, probably this guy. I don't have the V-pips, sir, uh, and I can't really remember this guy in-game, but... Um, yeah, I mean, he almost got there. I mean, if he had got there, I would have um, not been very happy, but good, good. Okay, so... <laughs> I'd say even now looking at it, I think I... I think I piss myself laughing at the game when I'm, I'm doing it again now because sometimes you do like process it like this and you, you come up with all that analysis <laughs> and you get a bonkers hand like that so okay that's for the GTA for you isn't it is it? I don't know okay enjoy so um, let's move forward uh, Ace King my favourite colours, Clarus and Blue. And it's Aston Villa. Uh, I'm a Villa fan, obviously. I don't, I don't really watch it too much. I'm doing well this season. I think they're about fifth or something. I watched them. My friend came to Thailand uh, for a month. Someone I've known all my life, but he came with his girlfriend. I've known him for about 50 years. We used to play football outside my house. And um, as kids, we went to watch uh, Aston Villa Liverpool. And every time I go, I have, I, I've only I watch a football game about once a year, once every two years. I used to go every week, but 
Uh, I think we sort of, I'm not in touch with it now. And I think we got beat 3 0 as how well. one of the only defeats so far this season. But uh, there you go. Every time I watch it, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the bad luck charm or whatever it is. Okay, so, um, yeah, we open. We get flat tid. Uh, and again, so what this guy have? I don't think he has anything because it would have been three betting, possibly. And so we go heads up with the ace king. We get a nonsense flop. I don't think that really means anything for him. It does. It's not great for us, but we, you know, we're going to be continuing. I check, and he puts a pot in. So this, um, you know, maybe if I'm continuing here, I'm just thinking this player is messing around. So I don't really remember this player in game, but I just thought, well, I'm not folding yet. And we'll see how we go. Um, there obviously, there's a straight on the board, but I'm not that worried about that. There's potential sets, but I'm not worried about that. A lot of these players seem to do pop bets, the sort of fishy types of players. That's their standard bet all the time. So I don't really pay that much attention to that. Uh, we call and we flop an ace, uh, we turn an ace, flop an ace, turn an ace. So yeah, I probably what I'm going to do here, because he's probably a bit of a maniac, or she's probably a bit of a maniac, I'll probably check, hoping that we get another pop bet in, and then I'll probably shove, and hopefully we'll call. So I'm not sure what I'll do, let's see what i do. So yeah, i check. Uh, we get another pottish size bet, so it's exactly what I thought. You can you can kind of predict these player behaviours. Um, that's you know, I don't really use my HUD too much in game. Just the V pip on the pretty much most of the time, and um, even from that, you can I get enough information just by looking what they're going to do next and what they have and what they don't have so there's 42 chips in a pop i have 90 chips there uh, I, I think i'm probably going to shove i can't remember what i do in game yeah i shove so it's basically i'm hoping that he's got an ace queen or an ace jack or ace 10 that fancies it Obviously, I'm hoping that he doesn't have something like ace seven, ace four, ace five. You know, and if uh, he does, well, that's bad luck. So here we go. He calls. And we uh, river a king, so that's great. So let's see what he had. Five four. I've seen this a little bit, actually. This happened to me a couple of times, so... You know, he, he made a mistake, really, of calling pre-flop. He got lucky on the flop, and we got lucky on the river. But I've seen this quite a bit, you know, players getting sort of middling pairs like this. I've done it once or twice, and all the time they're getting rivered, uh, you know, sort of counterfeited on the river, as I just did there. So... Seems to happen quite a lot. It's sort of a familiar pattern. So be careful with those middling pairs. They seem to me to just get counterfeited quite a lot, particularly on these sort of in these sort of situations. So okay, good, good. We uh we were lucky there. That's you know, I think forty three big blinds or something, one hundred. You know, this is the kind of look we've had this week. And next week, we'll probably just be losing all these. So that's the way that it goes. Uh, the next one, Ace Jack suited. Oops, I've gone a bit quick there. I don't know why I did that. So 
just seem like a little bit already, but let's just go through it. Open raise early position, flat. We've got a lot of this sort of flatting business going on. Um, now, I could three bet here. And I don't think I do. I think I remember this one. I think I played this this morning. Okay. But I was thinking I've got all these stacks here. If I three bet, I'm going to get a lot of folds. And I'm really only worried about this can attack guy under the gun. He is a good player. You know, he's probably one of the best players in the pool. So I think when he open raises under the gun, he's got something. You know, he's he's on ace, ace, king, king, ace, king, ace, queen. So he has me beat. And ace, jack's going to be unlikely to. So free betting. Uh, I don't want to get into a situation where, you know, everyone calls, we got all this, and I'm committed to a pot that I'm not going to lose. So um, I decided here just to flat, I think, and then see what the flop brought. And then hopefully everyone would be in the pot, and I could take as much as possible here. So... Uh, you know, that was my rationale, and I know GTO is probably going to say uh, three bet, but I don't. So I flat, and the flop's great, and I've got everybody there. Okay, so in my mind now, this is going all in. At some point, that that's it. This guy can attack. He's a good player. Uh, as uh, got ace king, I've got him beat. You know, I'm really only worried now against Jack Jack or Ace Ace or four four. Well, I'm not that worried about Jack Jack or Ace Ace because I've got blockers there. Four four is a possibility. That's the only thing when you've got a lot of players in the flop. You know, that silly little four. Someone's got that silly little four four, haven't they? Uh, so. So can attack continues and, you know, he's saying he's got something and he wants more money in the pot and it looks like he's trying to build up a pot, keep people in there possibly. Uh, that's one thing he's thinking there. This guy folds. The other guy calls. But the other guy we've seen from the previous hand is just call a pair of tissues you know so not that worried about that and uh, so it kind of works out good for us now because people are in and we've got 30 chips in the pot and we could re-raise here but i think I, I think in the game i called because i think i'm going to be good and i'm really just going to attack the turn so I don't want people to fold. Okay. You see these players where they've got the nuts and are like all in and everyone falls. It's like, well, great. You know, you've told everyone you got the nuts, potentially. You've got everyone to fold and you've won nothing. So I want to try and keep these players in. And that's what I do. So we go take a turn. So here. You know, now, you know, we have 35 chips. We've got people are likely to call a shove there if they have ace four, ace three, um, a flush draw maybe, uh, a straight draw, or well, hopefully, I don't think there's two five there, but, uh, yeah, so we are pretty much shoving now uh, for this, I think. Oh, actually, I check. So I want to see if more money's coming in. Can attack gives up, I think. He's, he's smelt it. <laughs> he knows his beat. Okay, and uh, the other guy over there checks. And... 
nobody puts anything in that round so yeah i think it's a lot of missed draws isn't it or just a really kind of fishy hand there so there's a lot of pot chips in there we'll just we'll just shove it in there i think we're possibly going to get one call i think nobody's no nobody's probably got enough to call even a small bet we're just hoping that the fishy player calls with a silly hand here i think so can I tap folds this player calls it's got a pair of tissues probably you know how it goes this player folds so we get to showdown Ace nine off. Okay, so that's great. Ace ace, fairly straightforward, I would imagine. Guy just shoves. It's one of the great feelings, isn't it? In poker, you've got ace ace. Some sort of stack fish shoves in your face. Yes. Yes. Go on with your ace free off or your suity connector baloney. You know. Queen Jack suited. Okay, well, easy enough. I mean, I think we played that hand really quite well. Uh, oh, I don't. Clicking too fast, too fast. Four, four. Looks like we get a set here. Yep. Um, great. We're kind of hoping for an ace on the turn here. This a bet, sweet call. Could re-raise here. Uh, I don't want to get him to fold because, you know, he's likely to fold with a straight draw on the board and it's hit our range more than it's hit his. So I think re-raising here is going to be counterproductive. Uh, we want to get uh, enough money in the, in the pot so he's committed. So we're probably going to do that on the turn. We're hoping for like an ace, a queen, king turn something like that we get the ace that's great and if he has an ace well hopefully he's going to attack it we hope that he doesn't have ace ace or ace seven or ace six well it doesn't really matter but ace ace is the only thing we're worried about what am i talking about so he attacks it so we probably re-raise here and then hopefully that induces or shove no we just shove I think maybe sometimes I don't I can't remember this player but you know I'm going to do this uh, against a player I give them something to aim at they get ace king or ace queen and uh, they're not likely to fold uh, we get a call uh, it comes to five so obviously you know we're hoping that it doesn't have a flush or a straight and he had ace four, so unlucky for him. But really, it was great for us. Okay, so let's go to the next hand. At queen queen. You know, it's one of those hands, isn't it? It's a great hand, but it's vulnerable as well. So always be cautious with queen queen. So we open. We've got a short stack of re-raises. I think here, you know, if nobody else calls or frees or four bet four bets or whatever, I'm just putting it in. Yeah, so usually I'm just shoving this now, everyone's folded. And here we go. We get a call.
Okay, I love eating short stackers for breakfast. I really do. Um, okay, another queen queen. So again, cautious, unless it's a short stack fish. Heads up. Uh, this guy's free bets. Uh, I can't really remember this guy. Um, it's a big free bet. So, this tells me it's probably something like, uh, it's not an ace ace. Probably. It's more like a king king or a jack jack or queen queen maybe. Or an ace king. You know, why do you need to put a really big free bet in with a so You've got the nuts. So, some players do that, though. They, you know, they shove. Oh, they say, Okay, and they win three chips. Huh. Oh, they say, they say, everybody. Oh. Yeah, but you just want three chips. Oh, no, I they say. Yeah, you, know, you know how it goes at this level. So, um, so, yeah. We flat, we could four bet here, but you know, I think I always, you know, if someone's prepared to free bet somebody open raise in an early, earliest mid position, you've got to be doing that with a strong hand. So, particularly in nine max, so I could four bet, but flat is okay. So, here we go. Uh, so, it's a terrible flop for us. And the only thing here I'm thinking is, how do I get all the money? You know, I've, I know players, as I just said, they'll probably say, I've got the nuts, I'm going to shove, and then people fold. So, that's not me here. I'm either checking, or I might put a small bit in here, hoping that, you know, King King or Ace Ace is going to continue and that uh, is going to get committed to a shop a shove on the river but let's see what i do uh let's go back a bit Okay, um, so we've got more money in on the plot. Uh, this is good for us now because, you know, we're only really being beaten now by 5-5. Uh, five five. It's always a possibility. And uh, we now really just want to get the money in so let's see what we do it goes check check to the river um so i hope from a move like this though he thinks i'm giving up but it could also be a case that he's given up and but you know it might give him or her a false sense of security to think you know we're king kings and nuts so what do we do we put a half bet in on the turn and the sort of and here um, so it's not the turn, is it? I'm happy with that because I think a lot of hands are going to call here. And some hands might even re-raise. And so I'll shove in because, uh, you know, there's a pot now of 60. He's got 80 chips. They might think, okay, 
let's go for it. Try to get me to fold something. But uh, let's see what they do. Uh, we just get a call on 1010. So I think that was that was okay. I think that was it was reasonably okay played. I think we got probably uh the uh, you know we didn't get all the chips, but we got we got the second best out of that situation. Okay, so four four, and um, this is probably the trickiest position of poker in the uh, small blind. If this is small blind versus big blind, I don't know. It's obviously not. Um, we flat four four here. The reason why I flat is because I usually do this from the small blind when we've got enough chips in the middle to go for it. When the two stacks I'm up against add up to around about 200, and then we've got the one left to come. If they come along, that's 200 on 80. It's a low EV hand. I don't really expect to get anything out of this. It could also be that, you know, my V pip's a bit low, and I tend to play these sort of hands, make these sort of plays to get my V pip up a little bit. Um, and, you know, occasionally. You get the goods, you you know, but uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we flop a set on, and we've probably got the nuts here. Um, you know, 8-8 eight, eight is really what we're being beaten by at the moment. And I don't see any 2-4s out there or 8-4s eight, eight or anything like that to worry about. I've never beaten two pairs, you know going to get uh, counterfeited so we're pretty much in the driving seat here the only thing I really want to do now is to try and get all the money in and I'm going probably going to be making some kind of small bet here to encourage continues or even checking to see if people are going to throw their money in but after I check so, yep, that's great. So, we get an over bet, which is a bit of a strange one. Um, you know, it's a pretty non threatening board. And so, I'm probably just going to be calling this. And um, the other guy calls this is this can attack guy. And. I, I I think this this next move of mine is a mistake. I think I just shove here uh, because I'm thinking there's 38 chips there. Okay, the guy's got 79 chips. If I shove, uh, he's gonna call. Maybe Kalatat's gonna come along with his Jack Jack Queen Queen. We're probably not gonna come along with anything less than King King. So. Um, I really probably just sort of called here, but I shoved, and which I did, and he folded, and he folded. So this is a mistake. I mean, yes, we got some chips out of it. Um, probably just a call would have done the job there, and I probably would have made a lot more money from calling. So that's a mistake. Okay, 9-10. Um, flop a straight. Oops, go back a bit. I put in a, a little bit of an overbet here because, you know, we do have um, the flush draw to think about. We don't want another diamond to come in. And you know, hopefully we continue with something like Ace King of Diamonds. And uh, so we get re-raised. Um, that's great. So it doesn't have a full stack. So we're going to probably just call here. 
and then hopefully to get it in on the turn uh we do call when we go to the turn so yeah it's a great turn for us and 20 chips there let's see what happens next we get a, an over bet here so you know this tells me could have jack jack queen queen king king something like that and there's 45 chips uh, in the pot he has 38 left behind so usually i'm just going to be shoving here which i do and he folds so again it's not the result i really wanted um But there you go. So probably you weren't tired. I had a straight. Uh, there you go. Ace King. A limp from a short stack. Useless. Waste of time. I mean, five dollars. Five cents. Come on. Another limb. Look at this. Short stuff. What a waste of time. Okay. This is uh, a bit small. Um, sometimes I would make this about 11, 12, 15. Um, so, mistake. We flop the ace. He's only got 22 behind, so I'm probably just going to be check shoving. No, oh, I'll put in a bit. And it's basically forced to go all in now. But it just calls. Fucking you know, I'll leave eight chips behind. Fuck me. So if you can't afford it. Okay, so now he's got eight chips. <laughs> but he's ace three. What are you going to do? I mean, just pathetic poker. Anyway, um... Sorry, short stackers. Okay, so uh, anyway. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay, how not to play short stop poker. Okay, very good. Okay, so I think that's the end of the good hands. You can see there that most of them were fairly straightforward. Let's have a look at some of the bad hands because it wasn't all great. So, if we do this, okay, this tells us the bad hands. So, you can see here, over the last three, two, you know, 4,000 hands, we did lose some pots. I think we got stacked once or twice. So, let's have a look at this. We'll, we'll just go through about five, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just do about eight, I think. Um, that will do for now, and then we replay that. How about that? We'll get rid of this. Okay, so 10 10. We've got a massive stack here. Um, this is. 
I think what I've been saying to a couple of people recently, you know, I like playing deep stat poker. Why is it when you win 50 chips, you're 100 big blinds deep, and I see people, they, they win 50 chips, they win 100 chips, they double up, and then they're either leaving straight away or they're leaving within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and, and I rat hole it, basically. Um, I mean, that's annoying because it denies equity to other people, so I think it's a bit naughty. Fine. Um, there's plenty of players to take money off of poker stars. I mean, I've got 43 big blinds 100 here in 4,000 hands. So, you know, I can't complain too much. doesn't really get much better than that. But it could be better <laughs> if these people stayed on the table. But I think, no, I think the other thing is, is that, you know, when you've got a deep stat like this, 399, Think about it. You're surrounded by poor players, really. I mean, there's a few good players. Kanatuk is a great player. I think it's really good if he's listening. You're very good. Okay. But a lot of other players, as you see, are not very good. And they're just going to see your stack and they're going to want to attack you. You're better than them. And you can bully them and push them around and you get a lot of value from deep stacks. So this is my favorite situation to be in. Yes, you run the risk of kind of, you know, losing a bit more from time to time. But, you know, I think on balance, it's just a good position to be in. But I like get, building up a deep stack and kind of hanging around and trying to mop up and just bullying people, getting people to fold with big re-raises, like, you know, just being aggressive. So, anyway, let's have a look at these. A limp from a short stack. Uh -oh. I mean, I, I don't know why these people bother, you know. I mean, what What's that going to achieve? Okay. Um... We got a limp. Now, sometimes we've got a hand like 10 10. I might limp behind. And what I'm hoping is that somebody will free bet and they will get some more money in the pot. We get a few players in the pot and boom. Okay. Or I'm going to three bet. Okay. So, what do I do here? I three bet. Okay. So, you know, that tells people I've got a big stack. I've three bet. If you're going to play against me, we're going to play for stacks. That's the way it's going to go, usually. So we get called by the guy who, if you remember from a couple of hands we've played already, he will play a pair of tissues. So, you know, sometimes they've got something, he's probably got something in this situation. And we flop top set against the guy who plays a pair of tissues. And it looks like we were just unlucky this time. So, he, you know, we bet here. And he calls. I think we're probably now going to get a spade and a follow through. We get a queen. Um, he checks, so... Yeah, um, I'm thinking now I'll probably just shove because, you know, uh, obviously nine jacks got the queen, queen's got the, I, I think I have enough to go for it. And I know this player is probably going to call quite a lot. What do I do? I just shove. Uh, he calls. The ace comes on the flop, so obviously he's probably got king jack. Jack queen. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so he gets a lucky turn, but I think we were okay there. And uh, just unlucky there. 
Jack Green suited. Uh, here we've got a big stack, so I want to sort of play against that anyway. We should be calling with Jack Queen off suit, rather. Uh, we'll call. Uh, I, th I think this is a real big blunder in this hand, so we get open ended. Uh, I should have been betting here, but I don't. Let's just go back. I check. I think I certainly should have been leading here. Yes, we're beaten by Ace Jack. And but we have a Jack blocker. Um so we, we, we decided to I think maybe the fact that you had a big stack sort of made me a little bit more cautious. And you could have you know, we you know we haven't got the best hand, so you know. Maybe that was the reason for the caution. So the uh, turns nothing. I think I, I think I do put a bet in here. I don't. I check. I'm just playing it really cautiously. Uh, yeah, that's probably. I don't know. I think I'm, a solver's probably going to be doing that a good proportion of the time because they tend to be quite careful and passive at times. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, this is a tricky one, isn't it? We've got to continue. I'm worried about his big stack. Uh, this is the advantage of having a big stack. Yes, I've got 200, but, you know, he's got me covered. I don't want to be losing that. That's the power of a big stack. That's what I like to do to other people. So, big stack play, deep stack play. Is good because you can do things like this uh, and get people to make mistakes. Okay, so I call. So here, I think I'm beat, um, but I'll probably end up calling because I should call sometimes. I actually put a little bit in, that's a mistake. Um, we get over bet, and I think I call. So mistake, mistake. Uh, we're up against the set. So yeah, um, I wasn't beating a straight. I wasn't beating a a boat. Um, it's not well played. Okay, so. Lesson learned. Uh, Ace Jack suited. Open raise. We get flatted. So I don't think this guy's got anything. Ace King probably would have re raised. Ace Ace would have re raised. King King would have re raised. Okay, nothing really happening on that flop. Obviously, there's a straight draw there. We're going to be continuing here. We get the jack. We attack that. We get called. I continue betting. We get flatted or called. Ace it so he rivered. Uh, well, yeah, rivered is straight. Unlucky. Three three. Flop middle set. Great. Small bet. I should be free betting here, but I don't think I do. So that's a mistake. I probably 
should be free but in this um now i'm thinking i have the best hand pretty much most of the time i don't think there's an ace five there possible um there's a nine nine there possible but i think come up against over cards or draws um a little bit of an over bet i could probably bet bigger here um so i think my mistakes here is i should have re-raised the flop uh, i should have put a bigger bet in here and let's see what happens so we get called i think i just made it too heat too easy for him to beat me here um yeah i think this guy had five five actually um i bet i have a bet i bet i called this is my state so yeah um it has five five i remember this hand i think that was really poorly played every move you know so Less on that. H J suited. We got two big blinds. Very big. Now sometimes here again. I've got all these chips in one seven three one six nine. I've got a big stack. Okay. I could free bet. And I could free bet myself into oblivion. And end up in a situation that I don't want to be in. I could flat, like I did earlier with the ace jack. Hope that everyone comes along. And hope for a positive flop. So that's kind of hope. But if everyone comes along, for me, that's a really good EV position because, you know, I'm then looking at, um, I've got everyone covered. I'm looking at probably adding one or two stacks by doing that. Um, what do I do? I flat. So that, that was the, my thinking. Whether that's the right thinking or not, I don't know. Um. So we go multi way to the flop and he puts 28 in. I think I end up calling this. It's an interesting hand actually. Uh, I call. It's just too much now. Not too. So I'm really just hoping for a flop here. And 555. Five, five. Okay, so all in. I think I'll fold here. That's probably really tight, but you know, if there are two aces out there, I'm struggling uh, and so on. So let's see what happens. This guy calls. We have it all in. A seven king queen. So I would have lost that hand to the uh, a seven, but you know, you can see what you're playing against here. Just bingo players. So sometimes making a tight fold is the way to go. Ace Ace, obviously this is an Ace Ace that we didn't do very well with. Uh, and this is one where I was trying to be a bit clever. I, I gained this, I, I think if I remember this rightly, we were in a really sticky situation on the river and I'm probably, this is a big blunder as well. So I was trying to be fancy here with my Ace Ace and slow play it. Probably should never do that here. Um, yeah, uh, and this is just, 
Yeah, there's exotic flops. <laughs> multi way play, exotic flop. Um, they love this. So I check. Should have bet. But obviously, Ace Jack's got the King Queen's got the Queen Ten's got the da 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 da. We, we we're now in a mess. We've got a pair. Obviously, it's the best pair, but we by no means have the best hand. But we get a bet here, an over bet. So this could be something: King King Queen Queen King Queen. We call obviously. We get enough at river. Um Yeah. We're actually not beating much here. I mean does he have King Nine? Queen Nine. You know, ace king, possibly ace queen, possibly ace ten, possibly. Um, I actually folded that, and I wasn't sure about that. I felt I was a bit tight. Okay, it was a bit tight. That's a bit tight. That's not a great hand. Those are the sort of hands that I struggle with, those sort of exotic flops, multi-way. I got myself into trouble there. I should have free bet the ace ace. There's, there's an example of why not to slow pay the ace ace. Because even though you you know you're technically in a great position, but technically you don't have the best hand, and usually someone's opening early. They've got that sort of flop. They're putting a big bet on the river. You usually beat, okay, even with A C. So uh, there you go. Ten ten. Limp limp limp, everywhere. I might even limp this sometimes to try and get a free bet and get everybody in. Um, I don't. I'll three bet it. And we get a call. Uh, open and a straight draw. No, I should have. I do bet this. I think this bet should have been a bit bigger. And I want to be taking this pot down now if I can. Uh, we get called. So uh, tricky. And um, again, I fold. The ten ten, uh, and I think that's probably a mistake. I think it certainly should be called there. I'm obviously be beaten by trips, but be beaten by nine nine, eight eight, queen queen. Uh, he called with he called a free bet, didn't he? So you know, that's probably why I folded. King King, yeah. Um, usually a bit of a dead, uh, ace on the flop here, probably. Usually comes with King King. Uh, exotic flop, multi way, you know. Flush draw, straight draw. Uh, obviously, we're going to be hanging around. I checked through there. Uh, should have bet probably that flop. But, you know, um, there's probably a couple of things I need to work on these multi-way exotic flops. 
um, probably a little bit over cautious with one or two of them. Small bet here. We're just flat. Could re raise, and I think. Yeah, if the jack wasn't there, I'd probably even be considering a quite a big re-raise. The jack makes it a little bit more difficult. Obviously, there could be a jack out there. There could be boats out there. Um, I'm probably undervaluing my hand a little bit here, though. So, and the flush gets there as well. So, we're not beating a flush. We're not beating a straight. We're not beating a, uh, a boat. So, we get the bet. We fold. Okay, that's it. So it's been a great week so far. Um, I will probably try to do a stream on um, Saturday or Sunday, I think. And I, I might even try to just to play some tournaments. If I do have to play a tournament or two, to put in get my weekly poker challenge i might do that even i think poker stars have got a bounty builder series coming up and i might just maybe on the sunday i, I just might play a few of those bounties get up my weekly poker challenge points you know about 80 points in the day and i've only got 100 points to get left for the week and if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. I can easily just make it up. Um, you know, tournaments, I've just been... I haven't played many recently, but... PokerStars ones, I just can't win at PokerStars anything. GG, fine. I don't, not really, I'm not playing on GG at the moment. Just doing PokerStars. Um, so, I might... Have a look at doing some tournaments on GG if I just keep losing tournaments at Poker Stars. GG, I get into the tournaments 20%, 50, you know, 17, 18, 20, 25% in, in the money. Uh, Poker Stars, 0%. I don't know. It's just every time I've got a position to go all in, I'm beat by a Yahoo. So that's the way it is. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, leave um, any questions you have in the comments and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye for now.